collected a few ideas that uh, attracted intense resistance from the medical profession uh, as a reminder to uh, my colleagues that we don't always get it right. Um, here's one that's interesting. Pilates, um, which you are probably familiar with because you see the machines in gyms, uh, actually began in the period uh, around uh, at the end of uh, World War I by a German physical therapist uh, or physiatrist, as he called himself, who developed a whole approach to, to care of war injuries uh, of uh, a resistance training in bed. And that was an era when uh, physicians believed strongly that the way to get better from illnesses was to be very still and lie in bed and not move. And the Pilates uh, interventions are now widely incorporated into physical therapy. Uh, and the uh, resistance, uh, I think, has faded. Um, here's another one. Uh, Lamaze techniques, uh, which are now very much a, a routine part of uh, preparation for, uh, uh, for a prepared childbirth. Uh, were also seen by obstetricians as, as very problematic and, and not uh, welcome uh, when these ideas were first developed. Um, and this one actually I, I wasn't aware of until I dug into this history. Uh, Edwina Froelich was a, a, a mother who was in, in the 50s discouraged by her pediatrician from breastfeeding and told that formula feeding uh, was much better. And she founded some groups of women uh, with a whole different idea of motherhood uh, and um, pushed the idea of uh, helping mothers learn to breastfeed uh, and um, uh, the importance of, of breastfeeding. And uh, now, of course, we all uh, understand the importance of, of breastfeeding. But uh, through the 60s, uh, most pediatricians believed that formula was better. Um, and, um, but in fact, not only that it's better to breastfeed, but that women need um, some support, especially in our smaller families, uh, in learning to breastfeed is, uh, is also now uh, well accepted. A uh, 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 wife of a person working with us recently had a baby and she was uh, very happy at the lactation counseling she got on the, the maternity ward. A and this is very much an outgrowth of, of the practices Edwina Froelich um, uh, instituted. And another, I think, very classic example of something I've benefited from in my own family is the notion that hospice care and hospice support uh, that led to the idea of hospice care and hospice support. But uh, the notion of uh, reducing uh, medical interventions and trying to make thoughtful decisions about them in the end of life uh, period, uh, were these were um, very uh, controversial ideas when they were introduced by Kubler-Ross and Cicely Saunders. So uh, I think there's some quirky ideas uh, right now uh, out there. Here's just one, uh, that meditative practices like mindfulness-based stress reduction might help with pain management. Uh, I could give you a long list. Acupuncture might belong on the list as well. Uh, but um, oh, here, keep going. Um, but uh, I think that, that part of uh, NCAMP's uh, task really is to bring rigorous science uh, to ideas that have come from somewhat outside the mainstream and I think there are a number of very good ideas. But there are of course a lot of excessive claims as well um, and this uh, slide uh, is one that I always enjoy. Uh, in fact antioxidants are an interesting and troublesome example. Uh, the NIH has funded a, a large number of major antioxidant studies and antioxidant supplements uh, have been very, very disappointing in their ability to modify disease in spite of the persistent uh, epidemiologic data that tells us that uh, fruits and vegetables are good for us. Uh, and maybe it's not the antioxidants. We really don't know. But as you walk through Whole Foods, almost every third packaged item is advertised as, as uh, benefiting you by antioxidants. Um, so whether that will cheat death, I don't know. 